Hello friends, today we are going to see Ansaga relationship. I am Dr. Gerald Antony, Assistant Professor in Chemistry, MCAS College, Padangote. So in Ansaga relationship, uh, according to Ansaga, the rates of various process will be related to driving force. So here we are having the rate, here the rate can be considered as flux or flow that is directly proportional to the force driving force so here j is flux or flow per unit area x is the driving force or gradient gradient means difference so l will be the proportionality constant uh, so here you can consider two types of rate of flow that flow of heat so for example there may be one system another uh, with low temperature and another system two with high temperature so the heat will be flowing from high temperature to low temperature this rate of flow will be considered as j1 for such type of system in same way in terms of concentration so here there may be two systems one and two so one the system two will be high concentration and the system one will be low concentration so the flow of molecules or particles or matter from two to one will take place that is known as j2 so and the flow will be taking place until the equilibrium exists between the two systems system one and two if there is a flow of heat then it may be called as j1 and when there is a flow of materials concentrations or matters it can be called as j2 uh, so here i have uh, produced a di diagrammatic representation how the flow is taking place suppose if there is such a system with high temperature it is marked in red color and another system with low temperature so obviously the there will be flow of heat from high temperature to low temperature so here the proportionality value will be taken as l11 in some same way if there is two systems in one which is having high concentration and another one is having low concentration so there will be flow of matter that is particles or molecules okay that is known as matter the flow of matter will be taking place due to difference in concentration so it can be mentioned as l22 suppose consider there is a two systems which one is having high concentration and another one is having low concentration now instead of flow of matter there is heat flow is taking place between these two two different systems due to concentration gradient or concentration difference it can be mentioned as l12 now consider again two types of system one with low temperature and high another will be with high temperature so we are expecting expecting a flow of heat from low temperature to high temperature but instead of that there will be a flow of matter will be taking place so it can be mentioned as l21 you please go through this picture by passing this video you may be able to understand it okay you just to pass this video and you see how the proportionality coefficient the transport coefficient is given in this video so it will be helpful for you to understand the process so now we are writing the j1 is equal to l11 x1 plus l12 x2 so here in this equation the flow of heat is also considered along with that there is a flow of heat which is taking place due to concentration gradient that is due to difference in the concentration so both are considered to be having flux or flow per unit time as j1 now j2 j2 here it, it, uh, first of all it considers the flow of matter due to concentration gradient that is L22 X2 so it will be due to concentration gradient there will be flow of matter and now L21 will be flow of matter due to temperature gradient or temperature difference so both are considered to be uh, the both are taken into consideration for the 
the flux flow per uh, unit time for uh, concentration sorry for flow of matter if you go through the diagram which i have given in the previous slide you can uh, easily write this answer so since there is a flow of heat the l11 and l12 are taken in a same single j1 equation here there is a flow of matter so it is taken in j2 Uh, so here the, the explanation is given L11 is the thermal conductivity coefficient which relates J1 and X1. So L22 is diffusion coefficient which relates J2 and X2. I have been highlighted it with this. Uh, so we know that L11 is thermal conductivity coefficient which will uh, relate the J1 and X1. L22 is diffusion coefficient that is the flow of uh, uh, matter from one high concentration to low concentration which relates J2 and X2. L12 and L21 are cross coefficients which I have already explained. L12 represents heat flow due to difference in concentration. So the heat flow will be taking place due to difference in concentration and L21 represents the flow of matter due to temperature gradient so in l11 and l12 the which the process is taking place will be uh, inversely taking place in l12 and l21 uh, so the rate of entropy productions can be found using the formula summation of jk xk uh, so here we see that the summation of jk xk is equal to 0 now we are substituting the value on uh, j1 x1 plus j2 x2 so we know the j1 value which we have substituted here multiplied by x1 and we know the j2 value multiplied by x2 So we have substituted it. This value will be greater than zero. So the change in entropy with respect to time is this that is this value the DIS which represents the change in entropy in between the system, not with the surrounding. So this represents rest DIS. So this is the value. So now what happens? We will be multiplying all the values and rearranging it. So we will be getting such type of value. So we will be multiplying. Sorry. We will be multiplying the x1 inside the bracket. The values inside the bracket and the x2 with the values inside the bracket. So when you are multiplying this, it will be x2 square. L2 to x2 square. So when the x1 is multiplied with the L11, the x1, it will be L11 x1 square. So the remaining the coefficients will be L2 x2 x1 and L21 x1 x2. So the x1 x2 is taken in common. So you will be getting L12 plus L21. This is equation number 5. Please note down the equation numbers. <coughs> So this equation will be positive when this equation is positive because we have considered the change in entropy with respect to time will be always high that is greater than zero. So if x1 and x2 has the same sign and becomes zero. Okay. So at the same time if x1 is equal to x2 is equal to zero the so the above quadratic equation will be positive if both the x1 and x2 have the same sign. And if x1 is equal to x2, the above value can become 0. So that is equilibrium process. When there is an equilibrium process, so the above entropy change will be equal to 0. Uh, so now we, are, you, we have to consider that the phenomenal coefficients, that is L11, should be also greater than 0 and L22 should be also greater than 0. So the proportionality constant are the coefficient. So the equation 5 can be rewritten as follows. So this is the equation 5. Here you can see 
you can take L11 in common. When you are taking L11 in common, this value will become x1 square. Again, here there is no L11. So we will have to divide this equation with L11. So when you multiply again inside the bracket, you can see that the L11 get cancelled. So we are adding this L11. So here also there is no L11. So if you put an L11 in denominator, then automatically the L11 which we have taken common in the outside the equation we can get cancelled when you multiply it. For example, now you try to cross multiply all these values. Okay, now you sorry, now you try to multiply L11 inside the bracket. So when you multiply n11 inside the bracket, you will be getting the answer above. Okay, the answer will be the above. This equation will be the answer if you multiply the l11 inside the bracket. So only I have rearranged and written like this. We have taken the l11 common. And so here we can put a, uh, there is an assumption that l11 plus l21 can be considered as 2a in same way. So l12 plus when you bring this 2 to denominator then it will be equal to a that is l12 plus l21 divided by 2 l1 is equal to a. When you take square of this value it is equal to a square. So these are all the assumptions which we have to do. Now we are putting instead of L12 plus L21 divided by L11, we are substituting it with 2A. So here you have substituted it with 2A. So I have maintained the same font color for the different variables, the same variables in different equations. So you can go through it. So here you have substituted the 2a and next you can see I have added plus a square x square and subtracted a square x square. So I have added the a square x square x2 square and subtracted the a2 x2 square. So this whole value will be resembling a square plus 2ab plus b square formula and so here So here I have written this as such. So I have written in terms of a plus b the whole square. And now here you can see here you are having l22 by l11 x2 square. I have written as such and minus a square is there. So since this will be becoming x1 plus a x2 square the minus a x2 square a2 x2 square will be there already we have used the term l12 plus l21 divided by 2 l11 the whole square so instead of this a square we can substitute that value here i have substituted it So I have substituted next you can see you can take common there is a L11 and 2 L11 you can take LCM of these equations and we can combine these two equations. You can combine these two equations as a one equation by taking LCM. So since it is having 2 L11 here you have to multiply both the denominator and the numerator with 2 L11 sorry with the 2. And here you uh, here you can see so when you are taking common LCM 2L11 so you will be getting 4L11 square as the denominator value the all the other equations are written as a common value here every value will be having x2 square as common so we have taken that x2 square in common this is equation number 7 please note down the equation numbers also so here you can see so x1 plus a x square this value may be always will be positive so if it is minus value or plus value when you take square the resultant answer will be positive and the term that is here we have used the term will be also always positive so as a result when you add this to, because here also we have used square squaring square square function is used 
so when you add these two values automatically obviously it will be also positive so l11 value will be also greater than 0 l22 value is also greater than 0 so answer answer has showed that the fluxes and forces are properly chosen if the flux and forces are properly chosen that is the flux is j force is x if it is properly chosen the cross coefficient will be equal so when you have chosen the j and x value the fluxes and forces value properly then the l12 and l21 value will be always equal so this is the answer of the reciprocal equation so thank you for watching this video Thank you.